If you clicked on this video, you've probably heard of lovable.dev and you're either planning on building an app or thinking about app building in some sort of capacity. Now, Lovable just released their new agent mode and it makes things a whole lot easier. Now, if you haven't already heard of Lovable, Lovable is a platform for people to create apps just by prompting AI. So you can basically tell it to make you a social media app and it will do that for you using AI. And Lovable has been one of the fastest growing startups when it comes to app creation and app building. Now, everybody can create an app using Lovable, but up till now, you'd have to understand the app structure, databases, and things like that. But with Lovable's new agent mode, you don't have to understand as much because the agent can think, it can plan, it can take actions autonomously. Now, the difference between agent mode and the regular Lovable mode is that you have to prompt the coding agent through every step. But with this agent mode, the agent can come up with steps on its own. So why is this agent mode important? Well, it can reduce your build error rates by 90%. It cuts down on on unwanted changes and it makes Lovable better at helping you reach your goals. So this is very important to me because I don't like build errors and I don't want to have to click every time I have an error when the app is being built. So I really am happy with this. Now, the way to enable agent mode is pretty simple. Once you sign up through the link in the description, you just go to your profile right here on your project and then there's an agent mode button right here. Now, before we do that, let's talk about Lovable's pricing because in order to use it, you need to sign up. So luckily for you, Lovable has a free tier, which is $0 a month. So you don't have to pay anything and you get five daily credits, which is pretty good when it comes to just starting out. And if you want to build your app and just like a first draft of the app, five daily credits is just enough. And if you want to make more edits instead of paying, you just wait for the next day and you have five more credits. But if you want to start building a production level ready app, I recommend going with the larger plans and their plans are pretty simple. $25 per hundred credits. So the base pro plan is $25, 100 credits. This is enough to build a pretty solid app. 200 credits is what I use because I'm working on a couple apps at the same time and it goes on and on and on when it comes to buying credits. Now, once you get to the 1200 credits a month range, it starts giving you more discounts, but most of you will not need that if you don't already have a subscription. Now let's go through the new capabilities through actions of the agent mode. And basically the agent mode is able to search your code base to locate exact files, functions, and and everything you need within your app build. Agent mode is also able to read files on demand. So it has a better understanding of your app and what changes it needs to make with full context of whatever is going on. It is also able to inspect the logs. So let's say you're clicking something, there's an action that happens, there's gonna be logs for that. So agent mode is able to inspect those and add it into the context. And the new most important update of agent mode is that it has capabilities of searching the web in real time and it could look for documentation. So let's say you want to integrate different tools, different APIs into your app. It can do that for you. You don't have to copy paste documentation anymore into the chat. And other than the web search feature, it can also generate and edit images for you. So instead of finding stock images or creating images using ChatGPT, you can create images for your site or app directly in the chat. When it comes to pricing for agent mode, the default chat pricing is every message that you send is equal to one credit. But with agent mode, it varies. So sometimes if a request that you make on agent mode if it's very simple your message can actually cost point something credit so let's say i make a simple request it could cost 0.8 credits rather than a full credit but if you make a more complex request it could cost up to four or five credits depending on what we want the agent to do so now that we've gone through the agent's capabilities let's actually do what you came here for which is to see the test between regular mode and the agent mode so if this is not your first app you probably know this already but if this is your first app you want to listen up here there are a couple steps that we want to do before we even build an app. So regardless of if it's an agent mode or not an agent mode, what we want to do is make sure we have a database ready for the app. So what we want to do is click here on Supabase and connect our account. If you don't have an account, just sign up for it. It's free. So once you sign up for Supabase, which is completely free, you can also use the link in the description for that. Your organization will pop up here after you connect it. You can just go here and to your settings in order to connect Supabase. It's very simple, just like this. And once you have that connected, you want to make sure you click on a project that you want to connect to. And then if you don't have a project ready, you can create one. If you have a project ready, you can just connect to it. And after you sign up for Superbase, what you want to do is brainstorm with AI to come up with the prompt for your project. I never really like just typing into the box because why not use AI when it can just optimize all of your prompt. And basically what I like asking for is a ultra detailed prompt about the app that I'm working on. And then I just copy paste the prompt into the box and start the process for the app. Perfect. 
perfect. So now what we want to do is click this right here. This is our project and we'll be using agent mode for this. So after I connected my Superbase project, I want to paste the prompt in, then we'll click start. And there we go. As you can see, agent is activated and it is currently working to build up our app. And as you can see in agent mode, it thinks a little bit, comes up with what we want for the app and then starts editing all the files. Now, this is not typically how the regular mode works. Regular mode just kind of does things. But as you can see, the agent mode is kind of thinking it like goes back on changes, comes up with different things, edits different files instantly. And it has a lot more context on what it wants to create for us. Okay, so this is what the app looks like based on that one prompt. I think it is missing a landing page, but I think it should be fine when we sign in. But yeah, as you can see, we just put in one prompt. And then the only other thing we did is basically approve the SQL for the database. And it came up with this. So in order to do the second app, we're going to turn off agent mode. As you can see right here, it's turned off. And what we're going to go is go back to the dashboard, paste our prompt. It is the exact same prompt as the other one. We're going to connect our database and then we are going to go and press send and see what it does. And as you can see, agent mode is off. It does not show right here. And let's see what the first version of the app looks like with the default mode. So just as we did with the other app, we are just going to press apply changes for the SQL. This is for the database to receive information and sort it out correctly. So I believe we found a bug at Lovable. We have agent mode turned off and it is using it right here. So what we'll do for this test is take this app and the first app we made, and then we'll do a different page within the app, one using agent mode and one not using agent mode. So while that's building, let's review the first app that we have. I we'll hide the sidebar here, we'll sign up and then we'll create an account. Now it will automatically send you an email to verify your account because you're using super base. So now what we want to do is sign in after we confirmed our email and this is what it looks like. So we have our profile page right here. Seems like you can't upload a profile picture, but it looks like this is the main feed. And what we want to do is share our thoughts, I guess. So I like making apps and we can post a glimmer and then let's see what it looks like when we refresh the page. Okay. So this is on my profile and I can like it and unlike it. So just with one prompt, we have our profile and we have our glimmers, which are kind of like tweets. It looks like you can't comment on these glimmers, but we have a profile, we have a feed, we have a login, logout system. There we go. You can log back in and everything works. So let's take a look at our other app. Cool. So this is the second app that we tried to build without the agent, but I think it might have been using it. As we can see here, if we click this, it used four credits. So that means it was using the agent mode because it typically costs one credit per message in regular mode. So what we want to do is also sign up for this one so we can compare the two. So I'll do the same exact thing. We'll join right now. I'll get an email. You can see right here that it gives me the notification as well as in the other one. The other one was down here, but this one was up here and I'll confirm the email and we'll sign in. And there we go. This is our second app. Now we do have our profile. We have our home page with the glimmers is what they're calling it. We can type a new one, upload an image, go to our profile. Well, it seems like we can't edit our profile, but we have a button for it. So we can set that up later. And I wonder if this one has a edit profile button. Okay. So this one doesn't have an edit profile button, but it's very simple to add it. Now, what we want to do is come up with a feature that we can add using either agent mode and not agent mode. So I'm going to brainstorm with Gemini and I'll get back to you in a second. So let's start with a non-agent app. And what I wanted to do is add a feature for comments and I wanted to add a landing page and I wanted to add all the necessary pages for this to be a production ready app. So I'm going to give it a prompt, add any other necessary pages for this app to be production ready, landing page, explore page, anything else you see might fit as well as any other features that are needed for this, such as commenting on other users posts, uploading a profile picture and everything else that may be necessary. Cool. So now that we have our app in non agent mode right here, it is off and I want to add this to the app. So I want to add a couple pages, comments, etc and I'm going to send it and see what happens. Again, it's off. So I'm hoping there's no bugs, but let's see what happens. So as you can see, it immediately went to create the SQL for the data for the changes that we might, we might want. And now it's working to create the changes. So it's thinking and it's writing the pages that it needs to. Cool. So as you can see with the prompt that I gave it, which I will be uploading into the agent mode as well, it came up with everything that it needed to. And this is just a default mode. And as you can see, it used one message credits. Now, before we go over it real quick, I'm going to paste 
that same prompt into the other app and we're going to let agent mode do its thing. So let's give it a little refresh. And then what we want to do is turn on agent mode. So we are at 37 credits used 37.2 agent mode is on and we'll paste this prompt and see what the agent mode comes up with for all these things that I wanted to do. So based on my experience so far with the AI agent versus the default mode is that anything that has to do with the actual app when it comes to the UI, when it comes to the copy, when it comes to everything that has to do with the actual app and its functionality, if it's a basic app, honestly, it seems like the regular mode is just enough. Cool. So now we have our two final versions of the app. So after three prompts, the reason I'm only using three prompts is because you can do up to five with the free plan. So this is something that you can do on your own without even paying any money. But anyways, yeah, this is our landing page for the non-agent. We have our login page, which looks like this. This is our sign-in page and you can join like this. Very nice. Let's log back in. So this is the login. Then we have our home page, which is just the explore page and it has the app post. So it looks like, yeah, the picture does not work. I think even with the agent one, it doesn't work. You have to have some sort of mechanism to convert pictures in order for it to display. But yeah, we have our explorer. I don't like the spacing here. It could be improved. Our profile page is pretty nice. I like how we have the picture. We have our banner. We have our bio. We have how many glimmers we did, which is basically like tweets, in my opinion. We have our following follower account. We can edit our profile. Very nice. We see our history here and then we could make a post. Cool. Now this is the non-agent app and let's check our agent app. So here is our agent app and it does not seem like there's any sign in button here. I feel like this could be improved. The UI is not the best. Spacing here is a little bit off. Let's get started. Sign up and sign in. I like the colors. I like the swipe and the extension of the box. Let's sign in and see what it looks like. So I do like the spacing here a little bit better. We have our profile that we can add an image to. Let's see if it works. We'll try first with the iPhone image and see what it looks like. Okay, so it looks like it says that it, uh, it's added to the database, but it does not display. That's because it's an iPhone image. So it looks like the agent got this wrong too. Let's try it with a PNG. PNGs work. It still distorts it a little bit, but I guess it works. It does not have a banner, which would be cool to have. Let's see, edit profile. We can add bio. So it's the same thing. I like building apps and we can save the changes. Cool. And this is how it looks when it's displayed. And then it says glimmers by me. The comment section is a little bit better. The spacing here is good. I like that more. So I guess it got that a little bit better. Oh, and when you press on this, it goes back to the landing page, which is not right. It should go back to the home page, which is the explore page. Yeah. I hope you found this video useful. Conclusion is that we don't need to use the agent until later stages of the app if we want to make more complex edits such as APIs and different integrations. But yeah, if you like the video, comment down below and make sure you subscribe and turn on the notification bell to get updated on new videos that we come up with and everything will be just as things launch. So anything that is new with AI, you'll be able to see it on this channel and I hope to see you in the next video.